Hi, I'm Tim and today I want to show you a game that is a bit special, I guess, for me. Um, it First of all, it fits the topic of this channel uh, really well in general because this is a game about software development and uh, actually hardware development as well, but that's a different story. So the game is called Shenzhen and uh, it's made by a company called Zactronics, uh, which you might know from older but nonetheless really, really awesome games like uh, Space Cam, Infini Factory, TIS-100 and uh, Infini Miner, which actually was the basically granddad of Minecraft. Um, and you know, they always released games that was like a really hard puzzles about um, a variety of uh, sort of logic related tasks, let's call it this way. And this one is no different. So this is how it actually looks. This is the start screen. Mm, it's sort of themed in a kind of, you have your own computer, I guess. Uh, which you use, you have a data sheet, which is uh, a PDF that opens in a separate screen, which is a menu, like 43 pages, I believe. And uh, without reading it, you won't be able to actually play this game because this is essentially a full-fledged microcontroller programming game. So it's, um, I would call it an um, assembly simulator, if you would uh, say so. So let's uh, first show you how it looks. So basically you have this uh, sort of email client, uh, which uh, has some amusing conversations here and there, but as well, from time to time you get these uh, assignments. So for example, those, as you can see, I played for, um, I think three hours now and completed some of them. Uh, like this one is, for example, an open-ended assignment. So you can, uh, you have to complete it yourself and then you have to click here to indicate that you have completed it. I'm not sure if that actually affects anything, but this basically allows you to play around with parts. But let's just show you how the game works first. So I'm gonna open this one and I have my design here uh, already finished as you can see uh, you know it's I mean it's average um, one thing I'm not sure about is this if those charts behind are actually gathered from all the users I'm guessing they are because then you can basically see you know how good or bad you are uh, in comparison to other people and how you can uh, improve upon that so let's open up this design and um, here's how the game looks so in this case we have a task to make a fake surveillance camera uh, we have two inputs, uh, active and network, um, sorry, outputs. They are outputting uh, things uh, that are basically connected to LEDs, right? And uh, what we have to do is um, we have to paste those MC4000 uh, and program them in a way that basically blinks the uh, LEDs according according to this specification so this is how it should look and then you can simulate it and see what exactly is your output and you know figure out the difference and basically debug it so um the thing is that uh the first one when you start you actually have something on board so this this piece why is this so hard is actually from the uh tutorial basically you know it just tells you hey this is what you can do so um this parts here are essentially assembly so you can push values into registers, you can sleep, you can compare, and you can do like division, multiplication, and um, no, wait, you can do multiplication, you can do subtraction, addition, uh, and I think that's it. There is no division, so basically you have to, you know, as in um, like real hardcore assembly, basically. Um, so you have to kind of get around it. Um, it's simplified assembly, but it's still quite tricky to basically get it correctly. And in addition, this space that you can actually see here. So if I try to write here, I cannot go below that. So this is actually the how much space you get. And, you know, to uh, cope with that, you actually have those bigger uh, parts that you can use. Uh, obviously, the further you go, the more parts you will have. And uh, yeah, so you basically have to solve that. And as you can see, uh, you can actually the cool part is that if we just stop that, I can actually go step by step and see all the instructions uh, execute. So I can see the sleep executing, I can see the um, data going out from our part to the network output and so on and so forth, which is really cool. And, you know, this is a very simple schema. So you just all you have to do is blink some LEDs, which is boring. But if we take one of the... Um, uh, latest things as you can see i'm not doing really well it's pretty expensive and the power usage is quite significant 
Um, yeah, so there's, for example, virtual reality buzzer thing. So it was, um, you have this receiver transmitter antenna, um, and basically whenever you receive the signal, you have to buzz the um, vibro motor until you receive zero. So, you know, I'm using only one big part, but still I'm not as power efficient as I could have been. So I can basically optimize this code because you've seen there was like, people who did way better job here. So I'll, like a lot better actually, if I would put it also, I guess it's like around 100 here, uh, which is impressive. Um, and again, coming to open-ended tasks. So this is, for example, um, the task itself says, hey, let's make um, a game. So basically, la la la, we get retro style handheld games. So if we finish all assignments and uh, I should design an electronic game and you get like controllers and you know, there's buttons which you can actually press. There are timers, there are LEDs, there are like three colored ones and even four, okay, this is white one, I guess. Uh, there's the RGB LED and um, there's even this grayscale screen where you can actually create your own custom screens in PNGs. And then depending on the input value, so if you can see the instruction matrix here, uh, you will actually draw a specific image. So you can really make a game here, which is uh, kind of crazy if you ask me. But um, let me erase that. Let me just drop that out. I'm planning to do that at some point, uh, but let's just try to do something, um, maybe a new task just to show you how it works and you know how terrible I am at doing micro uh, processor programming. I have uh, did it in school. Like we had a one class, I think, on uh, PIC 100 programming, I believe. And then I did one more custom chip for uh, like to run homebrew on V. Uh, that was pretty fun. I mean, it was mostly about soldering because the code was already written actually, but hey. All right, so what do we have here? We have a radio X bus, which will output 050, 100, 1999. And uh, what do we need to do? So, and unblocking X bus, yeah. So we have the three colors. So we have our red, green, blue, I believe. And then we have uh, packet that is received on radio pulse. Let us specify it. Um, red intensity. Okay, red, green, blue intensity and pulse. Okay, so basically this is red, green, blue, and then the duration. Is that how it works? which is a bit, no, I mean, that's, wait, what? When a data packet is received over the radio, pulse, uh, the letter specified, red intensity, green intensity, blue intensity, pulse duration. Uh, okay, if the pulse is in progress and drop, okay, so yeah, it seems like this is red, green, blue, and then this is a 999 duration. And um, that seems to be a bit over the top, although, Oh yeah, I guess that's testing for interruption, right? Yeah, okay, it seems so. So basically the red here is zero, the green is 50 exactly, and then this one is 100 and it's gonna run for 99, 90, 999 cycles. But since the other one comes, it gets interrupted and changed. Okay, that seems uh, simple enough. So what do we need? We would actually need, this is a receiver, uh, and we would actually need something do we need this large one? I mean, we need three variables. So we need to store at least two of them. And I think this one, so basically they also have registers. So here you can see the uh, ACC register, uh, but this one has two register date and ACC. So I think we're gonna use that one. We're just gonna plug it over here. And uh, so what we are gonna do, we are gonna do, first we need to make sure that um, if the input, um, which input was it? It was X0, right? All right? Let's let's move. I mean, we have enough space, so let's do it this way. If a zero is equal uh, minus 999, which means there's no data, we are just gonna jump to end, right? And we're gonna create this end label, which will say sleep one. So we just basically you end all your programs with sleeping. So, but if it's not 900, 999, we need to move x0 into ACK. This will be the first value. We move x0 into that. This will be our second value. 
and then we need to store the third value okay so i guess that approach won't work because i'm lacking one register which means we have to multiplex them right um so what does it mean it means i need this thing actually right um the problem with this game is that there's no way to look at the manual in game so you have to actually go outside uh, and look at the PDF here, which I will do because I have my PDF opened. Uh, so this is the PDF. It's uh, actually pretty nice and have some also like additional things like, you know, the emails and uh, visa application for People's Republic of China because, oh yeah, by the way, the name of the game Shenzhen is about the city of Shenzhen where you actually work. I think there was a description of those parts somewhere. Yeah, there we go. So we have this uh, digital expander. So what does it do? It will um, can so read write x buses and then simple I O. Okay, if x bus value is one, it will output okay one o o output hundred. Okay, so basically whatever something comes. Yeah, but that doesn't help me here as well. What I actually need, um, I guess I will have to. Split that into multiple um, multiple parts, right? So let's see, we will do that. And that basically is gonna be say red, uh, which means I will have to read the first value and then discard the other ones. I wonder how can I do that? <laughs> that's gonna be fun. That's gonna be blue and that's gonna be green. Uh, yeah, that's, that's, let's do it this way. There we go. Okay, uh, and uh, basically, yeah, they should be connected over here, right? That is not what I intended. Let's do it this way. Okay, uh, oh, and we have a duration as well. Ra okay, that gets even trickier now, right? Okay, let's see. Um, so I can, let's imagine I somehow figure out how to do that part which means that after that, I need something that has three inputs, uh, but also, oh no, wait. Um, all right, so this is basically, gonna, oh my God, that gets, <laughs> that gets complicated really quickly. So we have the duration and, uh, oh no, wait, I, I don't care about that, right? I can just read the duration in all of them and then sleep for the specified number of um, periods. I think that should work. So I can connect them here. Oh, that is wrong. And this goes here. Okay. Let's try to solve it. I mean, I'm not saying I'm gonna solve that right now because um, the, you know, the further in I get into the game, the more complex this things are becoming and the more sort of problems I'm actually getting with them because it's tricky. Okay, so the first value is red, which means I think this is the top one. So we're basically taking the first value and put it into the uh, our uh, storage, right? Then we need to read, um, I wonder if no op, no op is just no op, right? So you cannot do that. I, I wish there was some sort of a way to just read the value without like doing anything with it. I mean, I, I usually did it with like T equal uh, X zero and then just don't do anything. So basically this is red, this is green and this is blue, right? Uh, if I remember correctly. So we have red, green, blue, and then we have the pulse duration. So which means, um, we need to, what do we need to do? I need a second state if I wanna push, uh, oh God, that gets tricky. So I actually need to do a while here or you know, for each or whatever, but I cannot really do it here without storing the state of the duration, right? Which is kind of, oh no, wait, I can. So I basically, I, for, well, first of all, that needs to be blocking. So I need to slip until I get any input, right? Because, uh, oh no, because I will always get an input and that means I need to compare it to minus 999. And if it's again 999, then I jump to end. 
and we're gonna put end at the very end and end is gonna be just sleep one all right so if not we store the red value and uh, what do we have to do we have to move our um, red value into p1 and then it okay and then we have to read x0 again into act that's gonna be uh, duration and now the question is can I sleep for yeah I can okay so theoretically if I just copy paste all of that and say uh, okay we don't need red here we read green here uh, wait wait move oh um, that's right so this has to be equal zero and then we move here it it doesn't fit okay it's gonna be green and we do exactly the same and we do the same here so this equal i wonder if that's even correct that's probably gonna mess something up so to act uh, blue yes thank you very much um all right uh i think we can try to advance that so that seems to be zero now let's see what happens so we take the red one uh we have minus nine and nine here now it seems fine so we skip through that hey wait 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 wait, wait. is it because this one only dispatches it no, this 999, that seems to be correctly. 999 seems to be correct. Wait, where, what the heck is going on? Wait a second, am I screwing something up? So yeah, now it reads minus 999, right? And it jumps to the end, cool. Now it reads zero. Is it equal? No, it's not. Oh, because I already read from it. Oh my God, right, I forgot. Uh, it's only one time blocking read. Uh, now it gets tricky, which means we have to first place it into, um, mm -hmm. so we have to do that, right? Uh, it doesn't fit, that's not helpful. Uh, sometimes copy paste for some reason doesn't work. So we compare arc with minus 999 and if it's 999 we just um, jump to end right that's what we have to do um, now this is tricky so we don't care about first value but we care about second value and they all only go oh god okay so i'm guessing it will be easier to just filter out those values so we place those here hey i know they are not connected uh and actually um undo button is also something that i would love to see in this game uh we are gonna do that uh tqx x zero i mean we're basically gonna say sleep until there's x zero and uh yeah 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 okay um that doesn't fit let's move this down a bit there you go so this is gonna go here this is gonna go here and it no this is gonna go here now what we need to do is we need to take all of those values over here and then basically check if the p0 no wait why did it oh because it's it basically it can be both x and uh yeah right no, it is X, right? Okay, X zero. Uh, let's move it a bit so we, we can see the labels actually. So we uh, move X zero into X, and then if X is minus nine 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 nine, then we j uh, we just slip one, and otherwise we just move X into X one, right? So this way we will filter out all the minus nine 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 values which we don't really care about. Let's do this. And then once we're sure that, okay, we got all the values that are not minus 999, we are gonna sleep until we can actually read that. So SLX X zero, and the same goes here. So we can actually minimize the number of commands 
Um, let's see. So we sleep, then we take the first one, skip the second one, skip the third one, uh, push the first one and then sleep for the duration uh, that is given. Same here, but for the second one. Come on, out of format the cot. Uh, and that looks okay. Let's see if that actually works. And part is not sleeping. Okay, I screwed up somewhere again. So it went here. Let's see. Uh, yes, move here. That's zero. We got zero. Okay, so this put zero there. Okay, that is now 50. Good. Um, why does the other ones not advancing? Does it only where well, are they blocked? Wait, 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 wait. What is going on? Sleep, yes. Yeah. So what's what's up with that? Um, I mean, let's do compare. I mean, this one basically doesn't do anything. This is the compare. So equals is basically checks the quality and compare will. Uh, if it's equal or not equal, I think it would just won't do anything basically. Um, but I'm not sure if that's the problem actually. So it sense, yeah, there we go. We read first and they are still waiting for the input. And this didn't move anything into. Okay, it only goes. Do I need that multiplexer now because of that? Um, let me just make some space here and I think we can remove those wires that we don't actually need, right? And uh, maybe I need that now. So connect here and then this is actually P, which is not what I want. I want X, but can I use P as well? I mean, theoretic, no, I need to sleep before the, no. Do I need to sleep? I don't really need to sleep, right? Because I can just emit whatever. As long as it's zero, it doesn't matter. Um, so what I can say here is uh, move zero to X1. And which means here, instead of X1, I need to use P0, right? Uh, but, oh no, I cannot do that because I need blocking read. So I need to be able to read one value at a time. So what do I do now? That is pretty damn tricky. Okay. So wait. Uh, I mean, you can do a chain here, but that won't really help much. Wait, so if I connect all of them, then only one will receive part not on board. Oh, uh, it's, it's a bit off. Let's remove that. Is it only one will read it? Yep. So the, I guess the closest one as it goes with electric circuits, that is kind of, I mean, what we can do, so we can have this one to, um, I can't really connect from here, can I know? So we can have this one, um, let's maybe place it over here. So we have a bit more space. So we can have this one filter out the values, right? Then let me think, how do we connect that? Then we have the red one. So which will um, take in this and then produce the you no know, red signal. But instead of just skipping the green one, we will move it into X1. Um, that doesn't fit, which means that let's leave some place for wires here, X1. So basically I only sleep and I don't care about red anymore. And uh, I think basically if I, I still need to send it the, yeah, so it looks like, wait, 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 wait. I think I'm onto something. So if we, instead of this one here, use the large one, which, which is probably hugely inefficient, but hey, if it works, I am fine with that. The first try, then I can try to improve it. Okay, uh, X1 is actually over there and that doesn't work. Um, right, so we are gonna use 
say x and I need, uh, okay, say x2, right? So we're gonna push it into x2. And then uh, p1, no, that doesn't work. Um, that won't work as well. Let me think, um, can I move it forward? Can I, no, that will block the other one. God damn it, how do you position this? Man, how do they design those things? This is just tricky as hell. Okay, and then we need to connect this one. Uh, that's a bit too. And then we connect this one. And uh, it doesn't really fit. All right, let's erase all those wires. And we get that, that, that. And erase this stuff as well. So let's see. And if I move that a bit down. And uh, where can I put that in a way that it doesn't really interfere? Can I do that? And then that and then this. And then this has to go into two and I think we got a winner. Okay. And that means I can do that. Which means, okay, yeah, let's connect. Okay, now we are connected. At least we figured out the layout. That's a big part as well. So, and then we need to move um, x0 into x3. This is gonna be the blue channel, right? Um, so we output it, uh, but this has to be, so, and then we store the duration, and then we actually have to move the duration into x2, and we have to move the duration into x3. So this way, it's gonna be, this basically will sleep on the input, it will take it, it will put it into P1, it will take the duration and sleep. Okay, cool. And if I copy this code and paste it here, so that basically it doesn't matter which uh, this is, um, yeah, I guess it's a call, call, caller, call, no? CLR, yeah, that sounds, no, wait, that is duration, right? This is color and this is duration. Let's leave comments because it will be easier to figure out what the hell is going on. Okay, there we go. So we got zero. We got, we're reading the next one um, and it just, wait, what? Will it just hang? Yeah, it will just hang. Um, which mean, which mean it basically needs to sleep until next X, is that? Is that what it needs to do? So it sleeps, it reads the first value, it sleeps until the next one, it reads the next value, right? And uh, it sleeps until the next way. No way, that's not true. I think I, yeah, basically if it's, so no, it filters minus nine and nine, right? So let's see, R is not sleeping. Oh, I forgot to sleep here, right. That is my bad, uh, sleep. Well, basically we can just say sleep one here, right? So we don't need that actually. So we do that, that. Um, oh, it basically, okay, this also has to slip SLX X0, and I think this one too. Is that correct? Um, and let's kinda almost, but I screwed somewhere up. I mean, <laughs> I suggest we stop here because obviously I am not gonna Finish it in the nearest 10 minutes. I think you get the idea about the game. I'm absolutely finding it fascinating. And you know, if you are into programming and if you ever thought about doing microcontroller programming, then uh, definitely have a look at the uh, Shenzhen. It is available on Steam Humble Bundle, uh, like Humble Store actually. Uh, and um, uh, I think it's like $15 original equivalent. It is really cool. I mean, there's even soldier in here. What else could you wish for? <laughs> I find it really awesome and I'm planning to beat this cool dead objective and then do the little help one with wireless gaming controller. Yeah, because why not? Let's do a gaming controller. I am uh, kind of imagine the tasks only get more and more tricky 
And uh, hey, I still need to build my gaming console over here, so why not? Um, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, then definitely pick this game up. It's pretty cool. And uh, thank you for watching. As always, see you next time. Bye.